Ja, schönen guten Abend. Ich möchte Sie ganz herzlich im Deutschen Filmmuseum begrüßen. And I switch to English. Um, I will make the introduction very short because, yes, I know um, that it's uh, yes, long evening. And um, first, a very warm welcome to Jonas Mikus. We are so glad to have you here tonight. <laughs> And of course, I want to thank also all people um, involved in um, this event because Jonas has been traveling now for a couple of days. So um, thank you to Christian Hiller from the Haus der Kultur in der Welt in Berlin. Um, thank you, of course, very much um, Anne König um, from Spectre Books. Um, and um, thank you, um, Jakob Hoffmann here from Frankfurt, um, Raum 121, um, who was also uh, helping organizing this event. Thanks to all of you. Um, I don't know, maybe most of them, um, Jonas is familiar, you know a little bit about him, so um, also it would be taking too long time to tell all about his life, so I maybe just um, have um, two remarks or um, yes. Um, I first met Jonas in um, 1993. Um, that was in Mainz um, at the Cinema Jans. And um, he came to Mainz. He was also on a trip to Germany, but Mainz was also a special place um, for him because he was there um, after the war in um, 1947. He lived in Wiesbaden, but he studied in Mainz. So every day he took um, the tram to go to Mainz, to go there to university. Um, and um, so Mainz, I think, was, um, yes place for you which was um, important um, also um, um, because I think you have seen of course you have been before to the cinemas but in Mainz you have been quite often to the cinemas and I think um, there were some Mainzer film Woche there that you were attending and I remember when you came to Mainz in um, 1993 you brought some old programs um, with you from this time so you still had kept the program and um, yes you know still the films you were watching there so I think that was an important point also from you when you went to America and then um, started to make um, films. Um, the other point was in um, 2002. Um, Jonas was here in, in Frankfurt at the Film Museum. He was then invited um, from um, the Lithuanians. Um, it was um, an occasion of the book fair um, and the on guest of honor um, Lithuania. And they brought him here um, also to present his films, but I think he had also some lectures at the fair. And it was um, very interesting. Before I had been to um, Vilnius, and I was there looking around the bookshops. Of course, I know no um, no names, but in every bookshop, I saw your books. So um, the poets' books of um, of Jonas were pre present everywhere in, in Lithuania, and this was for me very um, yes. It showed how the Lithuanian really um, yes love you <laughs> and. Um, yeah, so m maybe these are two, just two little points from your life connected to me. Um, so tonight um, we are here, you not only have written book, uh, poet books, but um, you have written as much as you have also been making films. You have also been written for all your life, let's say. Um, and so um, the occasion for tonight is um, the book, the new book. Um, it has just been, um, yes, um, today's um, printed. So um, yes, we will talk just very short, maybe on this book. And then of course, we will um, show a film here. And then afterwards, there will be still um, the possibility to talk. Yes. yes. Hmm? I will be here after the film to, to answer your question. Mm -hmm. You don't, maybe we just say some words about um, the book. Um, Yes. Um, maybe you yeah. just uh, produce. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. is, does it? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Uh, uh, it works. Yeah. It works. Okay. 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 Uh, it's like it singers do. You almost put it in your mouth. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. I have uh, uh, written a lot about cinema and most of. Uh, uh, I guess you expect maybe that bo this book is about cinema, but no, I have also written a lot about um, other arts. So this book really contains my 
uh, writings on, uh, there is something on directly on cinema also, but mostly on the other arts. Uh, as far as cinema goes, uh, there is a large s section on uh, expanded cinema, that, that is uh, various other usages of cinema and where all the other arts come, come, come together. There was a lot of that happening in the mid-60s uh, in New York, and uh, this is maybe the only record of what was happening in that area, because there were about 30 different uh, uh, people, artists, doing diff each one doing something else. So besides uh, what you will read on dance, on, uh, on performance arts, on happening theater, uh, there you, you will also find uh, a lot on expanded forms of cinema. Uh, so, uh, and now I will pass it to the person without whom this book would not exist. <laughs> well, I, I just, thank you, Jonas. I should not speak too much about that book. Uh, <laughs> we had a lecture before at the um, Städel Schule and you said you should not speak too much about the book. People should read it. And I have, I think I, I, I share this opinion, um, but just very um, brief uh, information how the book reached us. Um, it was Christian Hiller, thanks to him, who introduced us to Jonas um, a couple of years ago. It took a while till we get to this kind of book, but um, we made it and uh, actually it was a very short production time also. Um, we had the first copy, your first copy in February this year and um, now it's already out. It's kind of a short production time for this kind of really thick book. But we, we uh, I think I think you did a good job. <laughs> short time. <laughs> but, uh, yes, yes. Um, we are training it for that. <laughs> I remember that you also gave me this once. You sent me an email. I'm used to deadlines, and I kept this in my yes. mind. <laughs> and um, yes, and I'm very happy that um, our graphic designers, that's Fabian Bremer and Pascal Storz, really took up the idea of a scrap book. We talked about this already. Um, the book has a lot of texts, but also images, which um, Jonas chose on, uh, of his archive. And um, well, if you are interested, in, you're welcome. And um, I will finish my talk here. <laughs> okay. And I uh, understand you have some copies. I have those, some uh, copies left. Maybe for, after the screening. Yeah, uh, yes. yeah. For all <laughs> who wants <laughs> to buy the book, and we can't, you know, have. Uh, I think we don't have enough. I'm sorry. I had to carry the books by myself with <laughs> by train, and I only could take 20 kilos. Um, my back is really ruined by <laughs> transporting too many books in my life and um, I decided to take this amount of books and all people who want to buy the book they're really invited we have a list here you can um, give us your name and your address and we will we are happy to send you the copy and uh, Jonas is also um, he wants I will sign them they will yes. he will sign them we have please sign yes, yes. He will he will do that and you will get a signed copy if you if you want. Okay. So I will be back after the the film. Now the the the, the film uh, uh, really the the title out takes from the life of a happy man. That doesn't mean uh, uh, many many have understood that these are like like leftovers from uh, uh, outtakes, you know, pe filmmakers have outtakes that's left from what one does from finished films. But they forget, uh, those who very often forget really what the title really says. It does not say outtakes from my films, or it says outtakes from the life of a happy man. 
I have no film outtakes. The diaries does not have uh, outtakes. Uh, there's only when I finish release some films, I put some f footage in, you know, uh, in them, and that's the film. And then some other time I will use the other footage. But they, those are not uh, outtakes. There are no, I don't have outtakes. All my footage is real material for uh, future films. No outtakes. <laughs> but these are outtakes, glimpses into my life. Outtakes from the life of a happy man. So don't forget that. Thank you. So you saw it, and that's it. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. yes. uh, okay. um, how is it for you if you um, look at the material? Are you rediscovering also your material newly, or um, do you still, yeah? You cannot have all the images in your in your mind, but um, how is it working with the material which when I uh, begin to work with that material, I discover it uh, again I guess uh, uh, that material begins to dictate to me what it uh, wants uh, me to do with it. So uh, it's uh, beginning from the beginning. One process is when I'm filming. Another process is when I begin to look at that material years uh, later. Then that material begins to tell me what, it, uh, what I should do with it. Yes. Yes. And on the one hand, um, you have um, the images. On the one, on the hand, you have this text. Um, in yes. The, uh, the, the, the text. So these the text, text. All those uh, are uh, elements. Uh, some elements are uh, sound. Some mm -hmm. elements. Uh, there are different bricks, different uh, pieces, but it's, uh, uh, they're all pieces of, uh, from my life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sounds and images, they're part of my life, so it makes to me no difference. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And texts, yes, yeah, sounds and texts. Uh, those texts, texts uh, uh, came from a uh, a uh, very young teenager person who used to send uh, to me uh, like excerpts from her diaries. I don't know what happened to her. Later I lost uh, touch, but I uh, kept those uh, letters because they revealed her like a thinking of a very young person caught in uh, uh, like civilization growing uh, growing just beginning to see life around her and having some questions and uh, uh, about uh, 
what she will be facing when she is growing. <clears throat> so I felt that's also what part of my uh, life, those letters, yes. Yes, because it's interesting, mm. on the one hand, you see the images which are very light, you have a lot of nature, um, children, animals, but then the text, they bring a little bit more deeper and more sadder um, tone into the film, because it also talks about loneliness and, um, yes. Yeah, because uh, she was a very sensitive young uh, person, used to come to the film uh, makers cooperative and help uh, to do some work, but she was studying she, uh, just in school, and uh, uh, she became like part there, and uh, so it, it's part also of my I consider life. So that's why it's there. May I ask you also something? Um, we saw a lot of your family life images from your from from your family, I guess. Um, Yes. And this, the title of the film is, uh, we have the word happy. And um, I was wondering if what, what happiness is for you is, uh, is this... The answer is this uh, film. <laughs> uh. No, but consider the, the amount of images we saw about mm. family. It's, it's this time of family or... They're not only family, there are all, uh, many other f people in it. It's not only fa and some animals. <laughs> <laughs> A lot. <Cats. laughs> yeah. yeah. There is no formula for happiness. Uh, yes. <laughs> To be with friends, to I have no no answer. <laughs> All I know that uh, I uh, I think I'm a happy man. I'm a happy person. Um, the formula is more complicated. <laughs> well, the film made me happy too. It's it's beautiful to look at, and I particularly enjoyed the images of. I don't know the technical term. It's not an editing table, but it's the Klebepresse, and you working on putting strips of film together, because it's so much images of a bygone era, and it, but it plays such an enormous role in the film that it just. Seems like it's, it's part another of the protagonist process. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. In the back. Yes. Maybe we can hear you. Oh, no, no. Hi. Uh, first of all, thank you for for the film. Coming from a person who normally don't like uh, art art movies or uh, like art videos, I really enjoyed it and uh, saw the depth of it. I really liked when you um, when you put down the exposure and up and down when you were. F I, and my question was if you were doing this when you were filming. Or uh, you mean overexposing or underexposing? Uh, uh, that's what you mean. N th uh, th there were uh, some moments where you went when you were. Um, I don't like normal, just normal, uh, uninterrupted filming. I, uh, I'm a nervous uh, person, uh, <laughs> so I like a single frame activity and. Uh, light changes it's part of the of my, of the rhythm of my uh, of what I, what I am uh, it's uh, 
why uh, the camera allows all that one can do with the Bolex camera to speed up, to slow down, to single frame activity or overexposure or underexposure. Those are all uh, part of the lang language of uh, 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 more concentrated kind of filming, co uh, condensing uh, reality, seeing reality through my own, my own temperament. I, 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 I must uh, um, say that I, I didn't know your work from before. This is like a surprise. I got invited by a friend. So it, it's a very pleasant surprise for me. I, I didn't know your work before. Um, do you also shake the, the camera on purpose? Uh, sometimes. There are moments, <laughs> not, uh, not that much, uh, real, but it, it's part of it. I don't care if it shakes. Uh, it's, it's part of the end of, of, it's part of it. And any mistakes, any, there, there is no, no, no careful planning or careful, it's, uh, you see, I always use, use during that period, telephoto lens. Telephoto lens has no angles. It's always confront, direct confrontation with of reality. So, uh, it's part of it. Uh, the s s a little bit of shaking, th that's part of it. Or mistakes are incorporated, part mistakes. There is no such thing really as a mistake. Uh, so. Yes. Uh, music, music, uh, <clears throat> uh, the church music, monks, uh, uh, it's from, uh, uh, Kremsminster, uh, uh, that's, uh, where my wedding took place. I picked up the music from the, this, that event. Uh, Piano was, uh, I used it, but it was taped for no purpose. It's somebody fooling around uh, one night. A really a very good musician, and he has actually is also a very good painter. Uh, and I used it. Uh, what else was there? Yes, it's some nature, some ocean, yes. That was your choice to, to work at this? I way. felt that uh, somehow uh, was part of uh, uh, not to emphasize or bring out, but to have parallel uh, uh, to go like another element uh, by a good friend that, that did not interfere with the images and contain the same kind of happiness. <laughs> Um, what can you say about your archive and um, how do you overlook all your footage and how do you proceed when you are editing? I myself, I do not have archives. It's just uh, my ha home, home is full of uh, working materials. Everything that is in my house is part of my working materials. 
There is a lot of junk, a lot of film and video and sounds and books and papers and uh, and I never know when I will be using any of it and for what. So it's not an archive, it's a, uh, these are my working materials, part of my life. It's just, uh, I have a lot of stuff because whatever comes into my house, I don't throw out. <laughs> I don't collect. I'm not a collector. I just don't throw anything out. <laughs> so I have a lot of stuff. <laughs> so we will be and what I don't use in the, did not use in this film, I will use in the next one. Uh, so it's uh, don't throw anything out. Nothing is out takes. It's just my working materials. Some I use now, some I will use tomorrow. <laughs> you, you say a few times in the film that um, you said you said a few times in the film that you're making it for yourself. That the that they're it's it's yes. your life for you, and so how is this? Um, yes, I make this it for part, myself no. and some uh, closest friends because I cannot make for strangers for uh, because for which member, uh, for which person should I make for uh, uh, for Peter, Michael, for which one? There are so many different people that I know, or there are. So I can only uh, make to satisfy myself. And closest, closest friends, like a conversation with my friends. That's all I can do. Otherwise, I would go crazy thinking for which one, for whom. Uh, yes. Do you reuse the same material or once it has found its, um, do you reuse the same material twice or once it has found its purpose, you just leave it that way? Some of the material looks like, uh, may look like it's reused, but uh, actually maybe just a piece that I, ne that was next to something that I used, uh, but it's not the same from the same footage situation. Uh, no. Even, you know, those uh, three uh, image or four image uh, frames that I use sometimes to make prints, uh, it's very seldom that they are from the film. They're ends that I cut off, therefore they're not in the film anymore. And before I splice two pieces of film, usually I cut off the ends. They're sort of uh, not the dust clean, not so clean. Later I clean them up, but I cut them off. So most of it, all of it is not in other films. And um, this movie emphasizes a lot of the um, physical process of cutting and making film. Now uh, I know that you still filming uh, now with a digital camera. What what changed with that decision? Cutting, cutting. It's very <laughs> interesting uh, how you yes how you cut and uh, what's exactly your question? What? What have changed since you uh, uh, shoot with a digital camera? Uh, after okay, 30 more plus years of using uh, Bolex uh, and showing my films in various places, uh, around 
the 1985, somewhere there, whenever I went to some university or they, they used to ask me, okay, uh, uh, Bollocks, can you show how you do it? <laughs> how you do that single frame thing that you can do it? Could we demonstrate? Yes, uh, uh, uh. That means this is this is it. This is the end. If, uh, 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 like uh, maybe I just have to do completely something else. Like I felt like uh, maybe I'm beginning to repeat myself. Uh, and that was part of. Then it coincided with some f with f video coming in and film stocks which I used disappearing from the market. When uh, film stock producing co producing companies began el eliminating slowly various stocks uh, and video was take, beginning to take over and they began to phase out the film the film. And I could not find any more film stocks that I was used to. I had like uh, use different stocks and relearn like from the beginning. So when by chance Sony gave me, Sony came and said, uh, Sony video, uh, here is a camera, you know, like a devil would come in and <laughs> <laughs> here is a camera. <laughs> And <laughs> give us some footage, and you can keep the camera. <laughs> give me us five minutes of, minutes of footage. So uh, I tried, and uh, then I thought, oh, this is like a, it uh, opens a different area of content and uh, 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 access into completely something else. So the film is disappearing. I'm beginning to repeat myself with my bollocks what I do. This is a chance to take, to go in a completely different direction. And that's what I did. Slowly I began uh, moving into digital, beginning uh, oh, somewhere around 19, uh, 90. And that's for uh, But But you did also then, of course, not uh, your diary um, films, but you did some completely different than with um, the video camera. You did also installation and other things. Um. Yes, I mean, uh, 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 Because, uh, I mean, there are filmmakers who finish the film and they consider, you now that it is it, that's it, and you should uh, never do anything else with it. Uh, but I consider that it's not written in the letters of fire on the sky that you cannot do anything else with it. So the film is there, but I can use that material sometimes for other purposes, cut up and make uh, in different in different combinations, installations, and and uh, uh, like uh, to, to see what other possibilities. What happens when you when you have like uh, eight or sixteen monitors and you begin to edit it with as you are watching. Uh, because you cannot see all of them simultaneously. You begin to do your own editing. And uh, it's a completely different, uh, something else completely happens. And with making prints, uh, 
since I'm using uh, a lot of single frame, a normal movie, story, cinema, narrative, you will look through, let's say, 20, 30 frames, and there is very little change. In my case, sometimes you look at three, four frames, and there are three or four changes. So I began exploring that, and that's behind my so-called uh, frozen film frames and the prints that I make on paper from, uh, because there are cl interesting clashes within, within those three uh, or, and four frames. It's not the same when you see them in the film. It's completely something else. So I'm interested in all those possibilities. And now, of course, with video, I do a lot of uh, uh, different things, like what I did in Venice. Uh, now it's uh, moving to Brescia, to I Italy, is uh, I produced like panels that are printed on glass. In Venice was the, the, the uh, uh, transparencies, hundreds and hundreds of frames from my films uh, uh, on windows transforming the <laughs> Burger King of, uh, of Venice into a cathedral. Uh, now, it, it will, looks like it will remain there, uh, that installation for uh, like a permanent installation. Uh, but for Brescia, it's be, uh, they're printed on glass and it will be completely like, like an indoor gallery installation, 32 panels. Uh, there are 700 or so different combinations of three images. Uh, so I like to try and all those possibilities are, uh, uh, why not, why not? Um, I have two questions. The first question is, how do you make your editing choices? I don't know. I uh, I permit, as I said, the material dictate itself to, to dictate to me w what I do. Uh, most of what is called you know, editing, uh, structuring, takes place already during what I do, how I film, during the filming itself. Later, I just string the pieces together which pieces and how, you know, you could string that way or th that uh, way, and you could string them together. That becomes uh, like when I, not that I work in trance, uh, but in some way uh, one works uh, in, in trance. Like you get so involved, you don't, uh, your, your your fingers do your you just do it you just do it with no thinking no it's uh, not a rational process so it is uh, like a trance in some way but there is no uh, rational decisions I don't make calculated, rational decisions. And the second question I is would like, but I'm not capable. Whenever I <laughs> do something consciously, it comes out wrong. 
my second question goes in the same uh, direction. Have you found something like a formula how to make film, or do you no, feel, do you no, feel that no, moment? No, I wish that would be. <laughs> you know, there, there's moments when when celluloid becomes film or data becomes film, or you can shoot the same thing th three times, and sometimes you feel that's it, or you have. Uh, uh, all three times could be good, and something diff completely different. Uh, 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 th no, th there is no. No, no, there is no answer uh, uh, to that, you know. Uh, no. I don't know what I'm doing. That's, that's how I would put, I would put it. I know and I don't know. <laughs> okay, I guess uh, we should face it out the evening. Uh, I appreciate your patience that you came. And uh, uh, do you have to say anything about last words on the book? <laughs> <laughs> buy it, buy it! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I wouldn't be here. If I'm uh, here, it's by pure chance, thanks to Spectre Books. Yes. Yeah. No, I, I have to say thank you. I had a very good time to work with you, even if we did not meet before. But I found it always <laughs> very, very good because you were so quick when I asked you something. I got <laughs> the answers immediately. You were always very efficient and uh, I appreciated a lot. And I said... Yes, if I would begin to think, I would be much slower. <laughs> <laughs> but since I do with no thinking, uh, then I could do it very fast. <laughs> and I have the house full of stuff. <laughs> so <laughs> it's very easy for <laughs> I, you know. But it's, it's I can extremely do it ten good. Books. <laughs> yes, I know that you are like that. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. Okay, thank okay. you. Thank you for coming. Thank you.